warm welcome to you all today we will discuss about uh, support vector machines in machine learning the yeah, machine learning and its classification so it has three types supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning methods this support vector machine comes under the supervised learning svm is a supervised machine learning method supervised is classified into two types classification and regression classification is a discrete type value and regression is a continuous type value support vector machine comes under this category let us see a example a boy went with his father to buy a fruit here he found that fruit is similar to another one now he asked his dad whether it is an apple or strawberry after few moments he correctly find that it is a strawberry because strawberry that color is similar to the color of the apple so he got confused build a model that can predict an unknown data here as we already mentioned that it is a labeled data method this support vector machine so we train the model with the help of input labeled data when a new data is given at that time it correctly predicted whether the fruit is strawberry or apple this is how it works this is we call support vector machine support vector machine is a supervised learning method after looking into the data it sorts it into one of the two categories but how the prediction works that is a question the support vector machine is working so after the label sample data is given based on the decision boundary and maximum decision margin it splits the data into two categories new data is given based on the classification it finds out where the data is going to belong it predicts the unknown data here we consider another example with a set of people with different heights different weights and different gender thus we have taken a sample data set of female then male is taken now we have to find out when a new data point is given where that data point ha has to belong whether to category 1 or category 2 we can find it now for this task first we need to split our data to predict the gender of the new point we have to split the data in a best possible way to find with the more accuracy this line is the best one we can see how it is best this line has the maximum space when compared to line 2 line 1 is having the maximum space that separates the two classes here it is class 1 and this is class 2 so compared to line 2 this line 1 separation having the maximum space but line 2 is having only the minimum amount of space so line 2 is omitted and line 1 is taken this is how the best line has been chosen technical terms for it this one this line it is called as a distance margin so based on the distance margin the classification is done in the first step so this blue color that is called as a line and these are the points so that line which we call it as the hyperplane that points is called support vectors so the distance between the support vector and hyperplane should be as far as possible 
support vectors or extreme points in the data sets. Now, this D plus that represents the shortest distance to the closest positive point and this D negative that refers to the shortest distance to the closest negative point. The sum of this D plus and D minus that refers to the distance margin. From the distance margin, we can calculate the optimal hyperplane. So, it helps us to find the optimal hyperplane. So, based on that hyperplane, we can say the new data point belongs to the mid gender. One question to be noted is, what happens if the hyperplane is not optimal? If the selected hyperplane is not optimal means there is a high chance of misclassification. This is a sample data set. If this sample data set is chosen means we can get the optimal hyperplane. But in case of this one dimensional sample data set means we can't able to get the optimal hyperplane. So what we have to do now? We can't choose this hyperplane here in this data set. So it is necessary to convert this one dimensional into a two dimensional data. For that we are using kernel to make them into a two dimensional data. That kernel function helps to convert the 1D function into 2D function. Now we get the optimal hyperplane result. This is how we convert the one dimensional data into two dimensional data. How we perform SVM for this type of data set? Okay, this is a two dimensional data set, but how we can perform in this sample data set? Even though if we segregate them into two classes, it is highly impossible to define the classes correctly. So, at that place, again using the kernel function, I transform them into a three dimensional data. Here, this is that optimal hyperplane that segregates the data into two classes. Here also, the distance margin is also have to be as far as possible. The main advantages of using SVM, number one is high dimensional input space, then sparse document vectors, then regularization parameters. Let us consider an example. A boy went to a zoo with his father. There, a group of alligators and crocodiles are there. But it is different for that boy to segregate them. Which one is the alligator and which one is the crocodile. Here, what is the main difference between a crocodile and a alligator? Regarding size, we will compare to the alligator. Crocodile size is very huge. But in case of that snout width, this is called the snout width. The snout width is narrow in case of crocodile but very wide in case of alligator. So now the SVM segregate them into two groups. We have to implement using Python. Here we have to import the SVM from SKLN. Then we create 40 separable points. Then fit the model. After fitting the model, Actually, this is the width of the snout and the size of the body. We have to uh, fit the model where it has to belong. Then plot the decision function. Then to evaluate the model, we have to create a grid. Then plot decision boundary and margins. And finally, plot the support vectors. Now, the optimal hyperplane is found. Then we can get the maximum distance margin. Here, these are all blue, blue dots and uh, these are all brown dots. So, now 
with the help of support vector machine we segregate the two classes then the blue data points that refers to the crocodiles and this brown data points that refers to the alligators these are the main applications of the support vector machine first one is uh, face detection for detecting the face based on its features it uh, correctly detect a person then text and hypertext categorization then image classification then finally bio informatics so thanks for watching the video meet you in the next video till then it's goodbye from vijay